it is 10 years to the second since uh, the credit crunch. Um, uh, and it seems that we, we, sh we should... We should... <laughs> <laughs> we should reflect upon this momentous <laughs> decade anniversary. Ten years ago, the financial world was going economic short-termism arse over casino banking tit, <laughs> to, uh, to put it in layman's terms. Hey. <laughs> hey. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, uh, I was talking to this about a friend who's an economist, and uh, he was uh, looking at, trying to find lessons from history. He was looking at a newspaper from uh, 1911 to see if we could learn any lessons. The headlines are about a nasty virus doing the rounds that led to the king banning people from clearing their throats and a famous expedition party arriving in Antarctica in a boat to try to reach the South Pole. The headline said, Royal Bands Cough Scotlands. <laughs> Anyway, he, uh, he worked in a mortuary, my mate, uh, and he, but it was not a top-grade mortuary at all. He, and he, he started, it when he was, he was greying in the hair and he's looking haggard and wrinkled. And he said, I'll tell you, Andy, it's exhausting working here in this not very good mortuary. I feel ten years older. Yep, working in a subprime morgue ages you. <laughs> oh. Anyway, so to I take actually his... stung James's <laughs> face. <laughs> Sorry, I can't bail out now. Uh, <laughs> Put your money where your mouth so, is. Uh, <laughs> so to, uh, to try and relax him, we went to play snooker, and he, did, uh, he didn't want to play a game, so he just practised doing shots off the, uh, the, the, like the elongated thing with the cross on the end. Uh, he was very happy with it. He said at the end, Andy, that was a great rest session. Rest session. Rest. Okay, no, that's the correct <laughs> response. So we then went to... Uh, he went on and on then, talking, uh, talking really, really fast, but not very interesting about how uh, you should steep your tea leaves in a pot and not just use a bag. He gave it his full proper tea bubble. Oh. Bubble. <laughs> Property bubble. Oh. <laughs> so we went to a pub quiz. And there were three questions, uh, three on sport and one on politics. The questions were, which England all-rounder was a key player in the 2005 Ashes? Which hot-tempered headband-wearing American left-handed tennis player lost and then beat Bjorn Borg in the finals of the 1981 <laughs> and 81 Wimbledon men's singles finals? Which Dutch housewife won four gold medals at the 1948 London Olympics? And who is the current Prime Minister of the UK? <laughs> he shot out straight away with the answers. Freddie, Mac, Fanny, May. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. So anyway, he tried recreating the conditions of the banking crisis, uh, crisis using laboratory animals to see if they would make the same mistakes as humans. But none of them were stupid enough to make it happen again. He started with the smallest animals, then got bigger. He made Mice had several attempts but couldn't do it. So too the cats, they couldn't do it. And the monkeys couldn't do it either. Right, he said, there's only one thing for it. It's the bear's turns. Be oh. Bear's turns. This is how they colonised us, in case <laughs> you're wondering. Uh, it, was, uh, it was friends... Uh, Friends are also with Great Britain's most famous jockey from the 1980s. Oh. Um, great, great horseman, uh, but he couldn't tell the difference between wild animals based on the sounds they made. On safari, I went on safari with him to get away from the economic crisis. In the middle of the night, he heard a bellowing sound. Shit, Andy, is that a giraffe? No, Mr. Piggott, it's an elephant noise. Then there was a roar. Yikes, said the pint-sized 11 times champion jockey. That must have been a crocodile. No, I said. It was a lion sound, Lester. A lion, a lion sound, Lester? A lion sound, Lester? <laughs> Anyway. Well, he's flustered this month there. <laughs> I should, I should <laughs> <laughs> that was, I think we need a step ladder for the yeah. reach on that one. So he had some suggestions of how to stop it happening again. Uh, he said we should leave it to the robots. I responded, AIG. That's a risk. <laughs> Cook's um, really destroying hope here. He's and, uh, been at the crease for at least 40 <laughs> minutes. Uh, and then he, um, uh, he said that we should, uh, should, should, should threaten... Uh, Sadiq Khan to try and get the city of London into line because uh, he reckoned that then the, uh, the Sadiq Khan would back down and I said what you think the Merrill Flinch M Merrill Flinch oh. <laughs> Merrill Flinch <laughs> oh dear <laughs> it's been a long day um, I spent five days at a cricket match I'm not thinking right and finally apparently he told me that uh, this, uh, this is very interesting top presidents apparently uh, top presidents of America many of them scared of uh, farm animal noises he told me that uh, Lincoln would get nervous when he heard a pig. Thomas Jefferson hated the sound of chickens. And the first president of the USA got shivers at the mere prospect of hearing a cow. I said, let me write those down. Lincoln, oink shudder. Jefferson, cluck fear. Washington, mute, moo chill. Washington, mo moo chill. I mean, that was one of the big bank collapses, Washington Mutual. I mean, it... 
Jesus. I'm going to really, really needed to end on something a little bit better than that.